What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Dean aka The Blue Crusader and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Halo Reach Forge Mode. Now this isn't the normal Forge Mode, I did do a video a few days ago on how to install Forge Mode if you want to check that out, the link will be in the description below because obviously Forge Mode isn't released yet but this is a different variant of Forge Mode, this isn't just standard, this is Halo Reach Ultimate Forge World. So this is Forge World with multiple mods on it. This is basically the best version of Forge right here, it's modded to the teeth, you can do so many things, you can fly pelicans, long swords, phantoms, the huge frigates which we see in single player in the campaign, we can shoot the scarab gun which was one of the biggest easter eggs in Halo 2 so that's some of the coolest things that I've ever even heard in a mod, we can use missile launchers, we can use a scarab gun which is similar to the Halo 2 variant like I mentioned and then all these other vehicles we can fly the spirit, the space phantoms, the normal phantoms, UNSC frigates, the saber which is the identical one to the campaign where it's kind of like a jet plane when you shoot up from the rocket in the story mode if you've played that and then we've got some pretty unique other vehicles which are usually props that we can't drive so we have electric carts, pickup trucks, troop warthog, all of these things which are not usually in forge mode are unlocked in this version that's modded. I'll show you the picture here, we have a few pictures, obviously I'll do a demonstration in game, but you can see that these things are not supposed to be flown. People are not supposed to fly these things, okay, so these are not actually in the normal game. This is, I believe, the Space Phantom right here, and then we can fly the Pelican. I personally think flying the Pelican is one of the coolest things. So I'm going to go ahead and press manual download, and we're going to jump ahead into the Ultimate Forge mode. Now this file is slightly large, it's not huge, but it is slightly large because basically we're downloading a map. I'm pretty sure right now we're not actually downloading the Forge mode. If you want to download the Forge mode, like I said, do check out my last video, but we're actually downloading a modified Forge World map. So this is Forge World, the map. It's been edited in some mod tools to actually allow for certain vehicles to be flown. Now, the interesting thing is, is you don't just fly a random vehicle like a prop and that's it. They've actually gone the extra mile and they've customized this so well. That if we actually look at this, so let's look at the Phantom, which you can't usually drive in the game. It's now got animated side doors, the turret and side turrets work, and it has the sound effects which it should do. So they, they've literally done everything, they've fixed the sound effects, they've got all the animations working from single player, and they've just added all these intricate details to actually make it so immersive and realistic in comparison to the actual one that we see the AI fly. Now if you wonder why this download's so small is because they're not using custom models, all these models are from single player, obviously the Space Banshees, Space Phantoms, the Spirit, and obviously the Saber and all these different vehicles are in the single player campaign along with the Troop Warthog. So I'm interested to try this out. This sounds absolutely awesome. So I am downloading it now. When it's finished, I'm going to show you how to install it and we'll jump into Halo. So now I've downloaded the Ultimate Forge file, so I'm just going to extract it and we're going to install this map. Now I'm super excited to test this out. I've been waiting a few days to actually try this out. It just looks so amazing how we can just play all these things. Especially when these games came out as a kid, I really wanted to play these custom modes. Right, so I'm going to open up the README and we'll see how to install this. So we need to have the Forge mode mod. So I made a video on how to enable Forge mode. I know I keep saying it, but definitely check that out because this map requires that mod. You need to have forge mode enabled and then what we do is we go to the reach maps folder and we replace the forge halo map into this folder and then we just start up forge world so this replaces the default forge mode so i'm going to right click and i'm going to click copy and then i'm going to go back and i'm already in the reach folder now if you want to know how to go to the reach folder it says up here this is the location you need to go to program files steam steam apps common halo the master chief collection then we want to go into maps once we go into the Halo Reach folder, then maps, and then we want to replace the map in here. So here we have Forge Halo, okay? So I'm going to change the name of this file to Forge Halo B, and then I know that that's a backup, and then I can paste the brand new file in here, Forge Halo, and it won't delete the old file because for most people, what they don't know is we have to use the version of Halo Reach without the anti-cheat to use mods, but the version that we can play online with, with the anti-cheat, it enforces all the files and it verifies the files, so anything that's modded, you won't be able to play. It won't ban you, but you won't be able to launch the map, so you can't play a modded map on the normal version of Reach with the anti-cheat on, so that's why we're actually renaming the original file and making a backup, because I don't want the modded file to be in my folder, because otherwise I can't play it on the normal Reach. So, now that we've done 
done that, we're going to open up Halo Reach. You want to click Play Halo MCC Anti-Cheat Disabled, and it's just as simple as that. Now we're launching it without the Anti-Cheat, which means we can use the mod. So I'll show you how to use the Forge mod, how to get everything working. If you haven't got the Forge mod, check out the tutorial on how to install the Forge mod, and then we can jump into the demonstration and the showcase of the mod. Okay, so we're now on Halo the Master Chief Collection. So when we launch the version without the Anti-Cheat, the modded version, we have this button here called create this is how we get in forge okay so you just press create forge and then jump into reach and this will boot up the forge mode now for the map you want to go all the way to the end so if we can just scroll right to the end forge world is literally the last map in the list and there's 20 maps so it's like forge world we do have a few different forge worlds these are custom levels and the official types just select normal forge world because that's what the map is that we replaced and select forge is the game type and accept options and we're going to jump into forge mode and test out the mod so this is super exciting really nice i'm hoping it works as well because we've installed it correctly. This mod has been out for a few days. I should have probably installed this when I installed the Forge mod, but I thought I'd make a separate tutorial and showcase because this mod is just so crazy. I just felt like it needed a separate video. Boom, right, we're in Forge world right now. I don't know if the actual map's been modified or if we have to insert everything ourselves. We have 99k as the budget, which is insane because you only usually get like a few hundred or a few thousand, so that's pretty nuts. So I'm going to jump into the objects menu. We'll, we'll go through and see what's new. Hey, right, okay, so here it is. So you have to scroll right to the bottom and select mods. So I was genuinely wondering where everything is. So we've got our mod section here. We can add drop ships. So here we have the pelican. And it's completely animated. I'm so excited to try this stuff out. So first up is the pelican. I'm going to fly all these. Then we have the normal phantom. So I'm just going to place these on the ground. It's a shame we can't spawn like grunts and enemies because that'd be so cool. Then we have the spirit which is just the dropship of the covenant. So it's one of those dropships. And what else is there? Space phantom. Okay I'm interested to see a comparison between the space phantom. Because I think one's purple one's like pink right? I'm not sure what other difference there is. Wait let's compare this. Okay, so this is the normal phantom, the purple one, then we have the pink one. The space one... Okay, so the interplanetary one has like a gun turret on it, and it drops enemies. The space one has the massive cannons, so that's completely more overpowered than the normal one. The saber... I did watch a video of someone driving the saber, it just looks crazy. <laughs> this is just a boatload of fun. Having other players in the game would make this just even more fun. These have like an overshield in the story mode, so I'm not sure if when you fly that, like maybe you have more health. Then we have the space banshee just basically a different skin to the normal one and this is like the cream of the crop right here this is the long sword so this was in halo one as well i'm pretty sure there's mods where you can fly these in halo one so i have already flown this before in the other halo game so we have the scarab gun here so i'm going to test fire that but i'm not going to shoot at the vehicles so we have the scarab gun there which is the normal one then we have the halo 2 version i don't know what difference it is and then we have a missile launch okay so that that looks pretty good that actually looks like a proper weapon warships Okay, right, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because that's just massive. I don't really want that on the map right now. So, Warship, I think I'll have to spawn that after, the UNSC Frigate, because that's just absolutely nuts. And then I'll spawn all these random stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and test a few of this stuff. So, this is the first couple of stuff. So, this is the Halo 2 Scarab Oh my god, that's crazy. This is the Halo 2 Scarab Gun, I think. So it shoots a Scarab Beam and there's a massive explosion. If you shoot it as a constant, that would just absolutely obliterate anything. I'm going to try not to hit these vehicles because otherwise I'll have to respawn them. So this is what the normal Scarab Gun looks like. I think the Scarab on Halo shoots in pauses like this. So it can't shoot as a fully auto and I'm pretty glad it can't because that's just insane. So that's the first Scarab Gun, okay? This is the other one. This is slightly different. I think this might be the Halo 2 one, this Scarab Gun, because what it does is it kind of balances it a bit more because you'll see the explosion's a lot smaller, there's less particles, and it's just got a smaller radius and I'm guessing it probably does less damage. But it's still going to pack a punch if you actually shoot that, uh, shoot something with that thing. The thing is, is, it doesn't show the names when you switch stuff. And the missile launcher has the icon of a rocket launcher. Obviously, because there isn't a custom one. So we have the missile launcher, okay? I'm not sure if we can switch to different controls. I'm pretty sure this missile launcher is one of the vehicle weapons. I'm pretty sure this is off. I think this is off the Falcon. I'm pretty sure Hornets aren't in, aren't in Halo Reach. But I think it might be off the Falcon. Right, let's, tr let's test fire this thing. 
So we shoot one rocket at a time and then it goes into like a recharge mode and then you've got a huge cooldown between the next few rockets. So you've got like a five second cooldown or something before you can shoot more rockets. Wait, does it have ammo? Okay, it's run out of ammo. So you only get a few missiles, but that thing's pretty crazy. Right, let's test out some of the ships. So first up is Pelican. The only game that I've actually flown the Pelican in was Gmod. There's a mod for Gary's mod where you can fly this thing, but actually flying it in the real Halo is just something else. The coolest thing about this, this is this is just amazing. So if you go in the back, they've added a singular seat to every single thing. So I think there's only, actually wait, I think there's only one seat on each side. But if you hold X, you can actually stand on the seats. The, the annoying thing is, is the viewing angle is really bad. It's kind of blocking my view. But you can have like multiple players. So if we were playing like a custom game in multiplayer, we could have two guys in the back just riding this thing and then one guy in the front. And then you can pilot it from the inside or from the outside. So, right, how do I, what's the controls this thing? Right, so I'm going to look forwards. So we can't lock the altitude. It doesn't fly like the Falcon. So we've got gun turrets. Wait, have we got missiles? Okay, so the only thing right now we have is just a normal gun so we have the spray gun this is the exact weapon that the falcon has so they've kind of taken the falcon gun and put it on the pelican and you'll see if i shoot the seraph i'm pretty sure this was the seraph it actually has a shield like single place so you'll see it does have a shield this is the pelican like i said if we're playing a custom game we could have just two friends in here and just mess around pretty cool thing you can even do the spins like it does in the cinematic so next up is the dropship so I'm going to try this. This is interesting because I think the dropship doesn't have explosives. I think it does actually have plasma though. Wait, how do we get in this thing? Okay, so we pilot it from the back. You don't get inside. Uh, this th Whoa, this thing's actually pretty fast. So it has the standard phantom kind of like shot. I'm pretty sure that's the same shot the phantom has. So we have plasma guns, but they're really slow. So by the time we've already like moved one meter the bullets are behind us it moves extremely fast we can't have people like passengers in it which is kind of a shame but for the most part it's a pretty good vehicle super fast now i'm going to try out the normal phantom apparently it actually does have custom gun turrets that work i don't know how you pilot them because you fall through the vehicle when you try and go out of forge mode maybe we have to flip it wait let me try and flip it okay i'm gonna land it on the ground like this maybe we can get on the gun turret okay so the turrets do work and you can detach them, so it works like a normal gun turret. But the only way to actually get on the turret is if you slant it and kind of rotate it. I think the only way you can have passengers is if you actually have people on the gun turrets. Then piloting the thing, we just have the standard shot that the troop transport had, so it's nothing really special. But you can have two turrets on the side. I would like to see a multiplayer war between all these vehicles though. Like Covenant versus UNSC with all these custom vehicles, that'd be so badass. This is interesting because on the Space Banshee you have the side cannons, which are slightly a little bit different to the normal Phantom. So can we use those? Okay, so, so far, it seems to be exactly the same. As the other phantom it's just another skin this seems to shoot faster though i don't know if that's just me but i think the cannon shoots faster we don't have a machine gun we only have the cannon and we can't operate the side lasers which is a shame maybe it allows like players to operate them okay players can't operate them either so first up most simple the banshee this is the space banshee so you'll see the back looks a little bit different but for the most part it flies exactly the same but I'm pretty sure this is a lot faster. I think the space variant is way faster. It's a little bit harder to control, but you can see how fast we're just buzzing through the canyon. So it has the normal space shot, but when we try and switch the weapons, it doesn't have another firing mode, okay? So this version of the Banshee only has one firing mode, which is interesting because in the story mode, the space Banshees do actually have rockets as well. And you can see you can use the speed boost. Next up's the Seraph. So this thing is crazy fast. I'm pretty sure they've used the stats of the Sabre for the speed. Just You can literally traverse the whole map probably in like 30 seconds. Like if you had some cool game mode where you had a race mode or something, this would be the thing to take. The guns are entirely glitched because I shot the cannons and they blew up my own ship. So definitely not going to take that for combat. But I'd probably take that if I wanted to fly across the map at lightning speeds. Reach has a lot of other vehicles that we've not seen in the other Halo games. So that's why it's such an interesting game. So this is the Sabre. As soon as you get in, you have like severely short control of the whole thing. Like you can easily fly out of the map boundaries. 
So, the great thing about the Sabre is it's already a vehicle in the Halo Reach campaign, so they didn't really have to mod this or change the weapons themselves because you can actually already fly it. So it works exactly the same as the single player variant. I think the only time you actually fly this in Reach is when you're in the space missions. So it does have the rockets, so we do have the space rockets, and you can see we can shoot them with the Seraph. Now, in the single player mode, we actually use this vehicle to destroy the Seraphs in midair, so technically, the rocket shouldn't bounce off. Unfortunately, it's a really small map to do maneuvers like that, but you kind of get the picture. You can do different maneuvers and rolls in midair, so that's like the perfect vehicle for dogfights. This is the longsword, okay? This thing isn't actually that fast. It's actually pretty slow. And you'll see we do actually have two firing modes. So we have a normal machine gun, and you'll see the lens flares from the actual engines in the back when it moves. Kind of blinding. I wish they weren't as bright as that. So we have the normal turret like that, and then we also have missiles. So missiles work on a charge basis, so we can shoot one missile at a time. But it's not actually a missile, you'll see that the explosive actually is going in the sea underneath. So what it is, is it's kind of like a stealth bomber plane, that's what the longsword is in Halo. So you'll see that we do actually drop out these kind of missiles underneath, you can see the smoke trails. So we're kind of just using that to bomb things underneath. So warships, this is the only warship we can spawn, this is the UNSC frigate, okay? I don't know how on earth we're going to fly this thing. Just look how huge it is for a start. Like, we we probably can't even delete this now because it's just glitched maybe we can spawn it over here okay we need like a big open space but there's i think we can fly it though that's the problem i'm not sure where we can pilot it i'm gonna try one time okay so i'm gonna land <gasps> wait we can actually fly it oh that's crazy so it doesn't really have sounds and you can fly but like i said there's just no space to do so you can do spins it's kind of unrealistic it's just so light and then when you shoot, all of the cannons on the vehicle shoot. If you look at the back, even the gun turrets are moving. So it's really nice how they've modded it and done everything, but a little bit too unrealistic to use on Halo's map sizes. This is going to stand here for the rest of the map because it's just blocked outside. I just can't delete it. So vehicles miss. So I'm going to spawn a few of these things. This is kind of like an anti-aircraft cannon, okay? Unfortunately, it's like a two-piece thing. So it spawns with a base and then the normal thing. So I'm going to test this out first. So... As you can see, the player looks a bit ridiculous, but it's a charging up weapon, so wherever you aim, it will charge and hit it. And it kind of has a rotation angle, but it's got a really short angle that you can actually spin. But that's pretty cool. It's kind of nice that we can use the uh, UNSC anti-aircraft cannon, basically. And then we have the Falcon, which is in normal... It's in the normal game, the Falcon, but the good thing about the modded version is you can have the transport version, which doesn't have any turrets on the side, which is... I don't know why you'd want that. And then you have the grenade grenadier version so you have the grenade turret which is from the campaign then we have warthog transport pretty self-explanatory but we don't actually see this in the reach campaign a whole bunch so we don't see it enough you can't get in the back only marines can get in there unfortunately but you can have two players in it so it does have a modified warthog which is really nice then we have an electric cart the fact that we can drive this thing is just awesome forklifts nothing so special you can actually ride those in the campaign and then truck cab this is going to be interesting to ride. It's a shame we can't carry anything on the back though. An Oni van. Hmm, what else is there? Shade fuel rod. So we can even man these gun turrets that we see in single player mode. So I'm going to try all these. These are the last vehicles, okay? So this is just kind of like a civilian vehicle. Drive the car. And maybe on one of the maps you can drive this thing. I haven't driven this in the campaign, but maybe you can drive this because this is actually really well made and animated. Forklift, that's really self expansion Then we have the trailer van. So right now I am actually in the passenger seat. And if you look at it, look how well made this is, okay? Even the doors open up and you get in in like a really cool fashion. You cannot drive this in the game. This is entirely custom. That's the coolest thing about this. And you can drive the truck. It's completely attached to the semi on the back. And then we can actually just drive around. And, and if you go in forge mode, you could probably put stuff on the back. I'm actually going to try it out because I think that'd be super cool. So I'm going to try these other vehicles first. And then we're going to take it for a demonstration. So this is the shade turret. We always take these out with the uh, Falcon when we're in the space battles. Because these things do a lot of damage to pelicans. So it's, it's basically kind of like a mobile plasma cannon basically and then this is the only truck so yet again they've completely animated the doors this thing is super heavy you can feel the weight to it because it just doesn't drive fast at all 
but it's pretty cool if you want to role play as kind of like a SWAT team or something that's definitely the way you go about it so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment okay so I'm gonna test this right I'm gonna spin this turret and I'm gonna put this on the back okay I'm not sure if it's gonna fall off it probably will it is a delivery truck so it would be cool if we could deliver stuff. So, like I said before, if you want to do some kind of like roleplay thing, you can actually put stuff on the back of this truck. Now, you'll see it isn't glued on. It will fall off if you spin. But for the most part, if you're driving on straight ground or a little bit bumpy ground, you can actually kind of like deliver items to people and stuff. So there's a lot of potential with this mod, guys, okay? There's a lot of roleplay potential. There's a lot of multiplayer potential. Just some really cool objects, basically. So if this tutorial helped you, definitely smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Channel and definitely check out these mods okay you definitely want to install this version of forge mode because it's a whole more bunch of fun than the normal version so if you enjoyed this video smash a like subscribe with the notifications turned on so you don't miss out on future halo videos thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time